because we were really frustrated at this point you're going to see something you've probably never seen on YouTube before and that is our driver restarting the whole car while going 140 kilometers an hour on the highway this isn't full self-driving it's still dumb but something's changed and by the end of this video you'll know if it's finally worth the upgrade We're running into a crisis right from the get-go because two problems happen at the same time. Navigate on autopilot activates too early before getting to the highway and right as the driver disengages autopilot to turn left and actually get onto the highway on-ramp. This causes the first part of this test to focus on enhanced autopilot without the addition of navigate on autopilot. What the heck does that mean? I'll explain once we get onto the highway. Now, let's pay close attention to the merging maneuver, historically one of the biggest weaknesses of enhanced autopilot in our older reviews with multiple safety critical failures, exactly during this upcoming part. So here's where things get sketchy. This triangular painted zone is called the gore area and you're absolutely not supposed to drive over it. But Tesla's enhanced autopilot doesn't recognize that. It just plows straight through like it's a normal road. Fortunately, Czech highways give enhanced autopilot a second chance to merge properly, courtesy of this generously long merging lane. But when the driver tries to initiate our first automatic lane change to merge, the car refuses because it sees someone coming up on us too quickly. And isn't confident or assertive enough to merge, which results in a last second lane change executed only because the end of the merge lane literally pushed the car onto the highway. Well, so far it looks like this is just the bad old enhanced autopilot, but let's not judge it too quickly. First, I owe you the explanation of the difference between enhanced autopilot and navigate on autopilot, which so gracefully failed to reinitiate here. Let me explain. Navigate on autopilot is a specific feature within enhanced autopilot. It only activates when you're already on a highway and navigation is set in the Tesla's built-in route planner, which you can see we have right now, but still it didn't activate. Once it kicks in, the car can suggest lane changes, take exits and even navigate highway interchanges almost entirely on its own. Though it still requires driver supervision, obviously, and in Europe, confirmation via the stalk, which made a surprising comeback in the new 2025 Model Y. So what you're seeing in this first segment is just enhanced autopilot which means standard lane keeping, adaptive cruise control and lane changes only when the driver manually initiates them using the turn signal. No auto lane change suggestions, no exit guidance and no high speed on-ramp off-ramp navigation. In other words, this is the enhanced part without the navigate part, which honestly gives us a much better look at the raw capabilities of enhanced autopilot on its own before any of the flashy semi-automatic decisions kick in. So let's finally start with the positives, shall we? Much has actually gotten better since we've done our last enhanced autopilot tests with older cars and I'm not exactly sure if it's just the new hardware or just the new software or some combination thereof. But one thing I can say for sure, enhanced autopilot is now much more usable and practical than before and it boils down just to a few minor but really significant improvements. As you can see right now, switching lanes is much faster and that's because the only thing you have to do is suggest switching the lane by putting on the corresponding turn signal. You don't have to nag the steering wheel anymore, which makes the whole process and feedback loop much faster. And there's another speed improvement in the fact that the maneuver starts immediately after putting on the turn signal. You can really feel the car starts moving just as you press down on the stalk, which feels amazing for someone who hasn't tried FSD anyways. Right now the driver gets confused because the car is not suggesting lane changes and changes the profile from mild to standard, but he's not aware of the fact that navigate on autopilot is not running. But how do I know that? Well, because you can see the two blue lines and not the single tentacle which would suggest that navigate on autopilot is running. Two blue lines means either standard autopilot or enhanced autopilot without navigation features. 
This driver confusion allows us to demonstrate to you the active driver monitoring done by Tesla. The interior cabin camera recognizes that the driver is not paying attention to the road and is looking at the screen instead and as a result bans us from using autopilot during the rest of the drive which makes us uh, stop and restart. Sadly, navigate on autopilot is still not engaging. Okay, you might say, so Enhanced Autopilot now just reacts and executes faster? That's not a very big improvement. Well, if you would say that, you would be dead wrong. And that's because this slight speed improvement means that many more lane change attempts actually go through. You see, if you take a look at our earlier tests, Enhanced Autopilot would actually fail to change lanes most of the time because there was too much traffic and after trying to engage a lane change it would wait first for stalk confirmation and then additionally for a a steering wheel confirmation you would have to nag the wheel and only then the maneuver would begin but the delay between when the car sees fit that it could change lanes and the moment when it actually starts to change lanes would obviously change the entire situation because suddenly there would be three cars coming up on us very quickly and the lane change was impossible to execute this whole automatic lane changing heavily, heavily depends on really quick and efficient feedback loops and right now it feels like this is what we're finally getting. Here on the off ramp, sadly, Enhanced Autopilot times out and fails again, even though the maneuver was properly manually initiated by the turnstalk. At this point, being desperate, we went on and restarted the whole car in hopes of finally getting to initiate the navigate on autopilot feature and spoiler alert, we've succeeded. Which is what you will see in the second part of this video. But before that, let me thank every single one of you watching this video. We're coming up on 2000 subscribers, which we'll probably reach after I publish this. And what a journey, ladies and gentlemen. Even though we're definitely not making any money by doing this. I'm really excited to make more of these videos for you and if you wanted to support us you can always you know give us a quick thank you under the video or use one of our special links in the video description. Thank you for all your support and now let's check out Navigate on Autopilot in the second part of this video. In the words of Anakin Skywalker, this is where the fun begins. You can already see the single blue tentacle in the middle of the car signifying that this really is navigate on autopilot and this time it initiated without any problems. But spoiler alert, problems ahead. This is the merging maneuver which looks much more confident than previously without navigate on autopilot and the car really after the first mild failure merges onto the highway without any additional problems just by pressing the turnstalk. You didn't even have to nudge the steering wheel. Suggests switching lanes on its own now, so it's uh, switching to the right really, really quickly just by tapping the turn signal stalk and you can already see that this is much, much quicker than ever before. It always took like three to five seconds between initiating any kind of move, but now it's just about pushing the turnstalk. Even the way it moves seems much more smooth right now. What hasn't gotten better yet and what's still pretty dumb is the lane change suggestions themselves and their timing. Now behind the scenes we've already switched to the Mad Max setting which is the most aggressive, most assertive setting for lane change suggestions. And normally I really don't recommend using this setting because the car is super aggressive and nonsensical about suggesting lane changes. At least it didn't suggest one right now, but we've got another problem coming up. Suddenly the car warns us that navigate on autopilot is ending in 250 meters and then it just 
ends and navigate on autopilot switches back to the standard enhanced autopilot with two blue lines and isn't following the navigation anymore even though we are still on the highway. This is probably a bug that's connected to the GPS locations or maybe labeling uh, certain locations. This is in the Czech Republic, it's probably one of the bigger highways and Tesla is simply not registering it as a highway and turned off the navigate on autopilot feature for us. At least it kept the regular enhanced autopilot on, but because we were really frustrated at this point, you're going to see something you've probably never seen on YouTube before. And that is our driver restarting the whole car while going 140 kilometers an hour on the highway. If you like us testing extreme scenarios like that, be sure to press the like button under the video, otherwise viewer discretion is advised. Because what you're gonna see right now is <laughs> just nuts. But I've got some notes from this situation as well. Curiously, even though the whole car software was restarting, Autopilot kept on steering and driving the car like it was no big deal, because that's what these systems are supposed to do. And that actually points to a really, really high safety of Tesla cars. Even if the system shuts down or restarts, the car keeps driving you. Like, what other car is going to do that for you? If you know about some cars like that, be sure to post them in the comments. And like a miracle, after restarting the car, ladies and gentlemen, Navigate on Autopilot comes back again and we're driving with the single tentacle and navigation features turned on. Hold on a second, this might actually be the very best version of autopilot in Europe. Think about it, when the screen is black and the car is restarting, it just can't prompt you to take over or pay attention and it's basically full self-driving, right? Please recognize that I'm joking right now and never attempt doing this yourself. Instead, enjoy this Mad Max Enhanced Autopilot Navigate on Autopilot performance. As we're driving around trucks, the car is expertly handling every situation. When we don't like a lane change suggestion, we simply ignore it and the car continues driving, which is also one of the best features of Navigate on Autopilot. And when we actually do want to perform the lane change, all we have to do is just, you guessed it, push the stalk. Unfortunately, the steering wheel nag is not completely gone, but it is not necessary for the lane changes themselves. It just stays as a part of the driver monitoring system. Navigate on Autopilot actually anticipated this off-ramp, it slowed down properly and executed the whole maneuver 100% and only then switched back to the double line enhanced autopilot without navigation. I'm really curious about which kind of videos you like the most because the number of views historically has suggested that most of you really want to watch just Auto Park. Auto Park has been one of our most viewed videos so far consistently, then it's Enhanced Autopilot and at the bottom lies the Standard Autopilot. I get it, it's the most boring and oldest feature and it's the one you don't really have to watch reviews for because it's free and standard on every Tesla, but still, let me know in the comments what kind of tests do you think that we should make next. As we're heading on this second on-ramp to judge the new Enhanced Autopilot Navigate on Autopilot feature, the driver attempts to merge by just pressing the stalk and... Tesla fails and only after he tries to do it the second time the new nagless feature actually kicks in and we successfully merge. So there's already some safety baked in. The Tesla will actually refuse to change lanes if there's a car coming up and it's very timid and very scared and cautious doing this. It's much more cautious and less assertive than full self-driving would be. Now I'm hoping that we get full self-driving in the upcoming months. There's a meeting on the 6th of May where it could be theoretically approved in Europe, but 
what's left for us to do is to just keep our fingers crossed. What's really good about Enhanced Autopilot is that it still allows you to go a little bit over the speed limit. We're going 10 over the speed limit right now, which is almost perfect for driving in the Czech Republic because most people drive at crazy, crazy speeds in the left lane. And right now we're going to see if the Mad Max Navigate on Autopilot is going to make us return to the right lane early enough. We've passed the car and no suggestion still. Is it going to come? Right now it's already too late and yes, here's the suggestion. We are merging back to the right lane, but the merge itself is really quick, efficient and without any issues. It's really hard for the driver to actually pay attention to both the road and the messages on the screen because on Enhanced Autopilot the car is kind of telling you what to do and pushing you towards certain behaviors with little text messages on the screen. For example, the car is going to nag you to you know, touch the steering wheel and apply slight force, or it's going to tell you, hey, pay attention to the road, don't look at your phone. But if it's not your phone that you're looking at, but the screen of the car itself, then it gets a little bit uh, conflicting because as you're trying to read the message, the car is actively shouting at you to stop reading it. Right now it's going in the left lane as it should and bonus points for not trying to get back behind this truck and I think by now you have a really clear image of how much improved the Enhanced Autopilot actually is but we're going to make many more videos about it in the future we want to try to go all the way around Prague without any interventions which I think would be a really great challenge another really good suggestion to go back in but as you can see this is a perfect example of where the suggestion isn't actually that good because the car doesn't see a really slow big truck just a few hundred meters ahead of us and wants to get behind that truck which is nonsense obviously if we're going at this speed we want to keep that speed and keep the smoothness at a maximum so final verdict is Enhanced Autopilot actually worth it at this point? I would say it still isn't, even though it's much better and much more improved. I would suggest just using the regular free autopilot and maybe add some third-party plugins like the sexy commander with the sexy buttons, which actually allows you to re-engage autopilot after manual lane changes and is much more convenient and also less expensive. For its price, Enhanced Autopilot is still not good enough. You be the judge. Compare what you've just seen to the standard autopilot we've tested in this video. Yes, the only thing you have to do is click on the video in the middle of your screen and just look what every single Tesla can do right from the factory without paying a dime. It's really incredible if you think about it like that, but like I said, not full self-driving yet.